My name is Dan Mennell. I'm a biologist at the University of Windsor in Ontario, Canada. My colleagues and I recently published a paper in the journal Methods in Ecology and Evolution called a Novel Digital Telemetry System for Tracking Wild Animals. Radio telemetry is a really important tool for ecologists and behavioral biologists. By attaching a small radio transmitter to the back of a wild animal, we can use telemetry to track that animal's movements and behavior and understand their ecology in a way that we couldn't with any other technology. In this paper, my colleagues and I used a new kind of radio telemetry system called EncounterNet. The first component of an EncounterNet telemetry system is the radio tag. These are very, very small devices that can be worn on the back of an animal. They emit radio signals, but they contain batteries and a digital microprocessor that can be programmed remotely using radio commands. Each EncounterNet tag emits a unique signal so that every animal in the population that's carrying one of these tags can be recorded at the same time. The second component of an EncounterNet radio telemetry system are the receiver stations. These are small, weatherproof devices that are run on 4D cell batteries that can be left out in the field to record pulses over weeks at a time. They record every pulse emitted by the animals around them automatically, day in, day out. The third component of EncounterNet technology is the master node. This is an antenna attached to a laptop computer. It can wirelessly download the data from the receiver stations. It can also be used to reprogram the tags that are carried by the animals. This is a very new technology developed by researchers at the University of Washington named John Burt and Brian Otis. We use this new EncounterNet technology to study female behavior in long-tailed mannequins. Long-tailed mannequins are fascinating birds found in the forests of Costa Rica. My chief collaborator on this research, Stephanie Doucette of the University of Windsor, has been studying mannequins for a decade. Male mannequins are showy animals. Males attract females to a dance perch by singing coordinated duets, and then they dance. They dance for females by leapfrogging over top of one another on a display perch or a branch that is low to the ground. Although we know a lot about males, we don't know very much about females. Females are cryptic in color, they look pretty much like a leaf in the tropical forest, and they're secretive in their movements. By putting EncounterNet tags on females and receiver stations below male dance perches, it could provide us with unprecedented insight into the activities of female mannequins. My colleagues and I ran five tests of the EncounterNet system to see how well it could track the behavior of female mannequins. In test one, we mounted tags on a wooden pole, and we held that pole at various distances from receiver stations in the forest in Costa Rica. We found that it worked very well for telling us how far away the tags were from the receiver station. In test two, we mounted tags on a short wooden pole and attached this pole to the dance perches of male long-tailed mannequins. We left them sitting there for a period of time to see how the signal strength varied. We found that there was only small variation, and we also found that the tag strength was much stronger when mounted on the dance perch compared to when the tags were held five meters away. In our third test of the EncounterNet system, we varied the angle of the antennas by 90 degree and found that variable antenna angles had very little effect on the system. Test four of the EncounterNet system was our big test. For this test, I mounted tags on the end of a wooden pole and moved through the forest in Costa Rica, simulating the kinds of things that a female long-tailed mannequin would do, including moving through the forest and then sitting down on branches, sometimes sitting on the perch where males dance. My collaborators then collected data from the receiver stations that were mounted around the forest and attempted to recreate the pattern that I had traveled to see if we could accurately reconstruct where the tags had moved. Excitingly, this test proved that we could very accurately reconstruct the movement patterns of female long-tailed mannequins. The system detected 96% of the perch visits that I simulated with an EncounterNet tag. Our final test of the EncounterNet system was to see how females would respond to being tagged with an EncounterNet tag. In total, we tagged over 80 females and found they responded very well to carrying an EncounterNet tag. The tags were small and weighed less than 5% of the female's body weight.
We mounted the tags on the females using a figure eight leg harness so that it sat on them much like a backpack. Of the 80 females, we continued to record them for up to 21 days after we released them back into the forest using the EncounterNet receiver stations. In conclusion, our field test of this new EncounterNet technology proved that the system worked very well for tracking the movement behaviors of female long-tailed mannequins. We think that this new system will be very useful for ecologists and behavioral biologists who want to radio tag animals in a new way involving digital radio tags and automated receiver stations. You can find out more about our work by reading the paper that Stephanie Doucette, myself, and our colleagues published in the journal Methods in Ecology and Evolution. You can find out more about research in my laboratory through the Mental Sound Analysis Lab website.